Okie dokie. So there's a couple of things that I want, and I can't think of a better way to get them than to do this. So my DVR is uploading to YouTube, and the image is at a different speed than the sound. So you don't really get quite the right depiction of my uh, flight. So the last couple times I've been flying, I've been really happy with my uh, flights and I've been leaving the uh, field feeling like I've just been absolutely ripping but I know that I'm a humble pilot when compared to like a really good pilot but that's actually what I do is I sit there and I I say things to myself in my head like that was awesome. So what I'm going to do is I want to talk about the tracks that I fly a little bit. So I'm going to play this uh, DVR from today. And it should play back in real time this way. And you'll get the sound and the video together. And then I'll get to talk over the video a little bit if I think of things that I want to say about the track. So, right in the beginning, I always have to kind of fly slow and kind of get things going. So this part of the track is really, actually, it's a lot harder to get the throttle because under the trees, there's a lot of humidity. Over towards this section, throttle seems to work a little better for the most part. But actually, throttle management is, is particularly challenging in a humid environment, I think. It's really muddy over here. So pretty soon, uh, I start to get some pretty good quick moves, some better turns and cornering and stuff like that. So that corner right there, that big, long, swooping turn. I don't know if it's on this flight, and it's hard for me to pick a DVR. I just kind of picked one of the ones that I thought was working pretty well. This one's actually not working that well. Uh, my little yeah dude means I should go play back the other one. So actually, that's what I'm going to do right now. Maybe this one will be a better display. All of this was on this copter. All of that was waiting for my bad motor to start spinning. One of my motors is doing this chirpy thing sometimes, and I'm waiting for replacements, but I haven't got them yet. I'm not sure how good the replacements are going to be. I got them off AliExpress for $15 for four motors. They're 2204 cheapies, but they look like the same body. So these are Banggood motors for, you know, cheap motors. So they might be fairly comparable. <laughs> so my hope is that you can see the actual speed that my copter is moving is one of the main things about this uh, little rundown. Also down in that funny area with no throttle, the video signal goes crazy.
that big swooping corner has like a throttle pocket that works really well and I think part of it is that it's got warmer air drier air over there on that side of the course over here you see I'm always sinking towards the ground it's a lot muddier over in this part of the course Right here, this is a cool corner because the tree actually has lots of room in it. And I say that it's in one of my DVRs, but it's pretty cool because you can really... I mean, just by the end of today's runs, I was really thinking that that tree is a great corner to practice hitting really fast because there's actually quite a bit of room up inside of there to, to kind of wash back and have some room for error. So it's actually... it's. It's a lot less risky to make the corner than than you might think. And then also, that last branch, you can bail underneath it to... If you're really out of control, you can just kind of drop your throttle and you'll drop out of the tree. And, and then the worst that'll happen is you'll take a mud dive. But you should be able to drop out of the tree and then kind of catch it and then find your way back to the course. Anyways, it's very exciting to fly the tree because... You see so much of a future in it. So that's basically... That's where you can see my battery starting to kind of let back a little bit and start to lose a little bit of its juice so once you hit that weaker air spot where you really it's hard to stay off the ground in that little s is back there so it's a it's you crash there more than any up in any of the trees i mean after this tree right here all of these trees right here, you're constantly going onto the ground because as your battery starts to sag, then you really need a lot of throttle and you also you have to fly a lot more flat. So you can't really bank the turns so much. You really have to kind of wash the turns instead, just kind of wash around with a nice flat angle. Which is a lot slower. So you really get wanting to bank the corners and, and bite around the trees but the air just doesn't hold the copter up Probably in a more arid environment, like a you know in the desert at the right time of day, you can probably get very long battery lives and a lot of speed. So in this case, ideal sailing conditions would also offer ideal flying conditions. Not that I'm much of a sailor, but I did sail my skateboard before. So this is, this is one of my more exciting flights. I mean, lots of my flights are not as quick of a pace as this. And one of the problems with my DVR is because the video reel plays so much faster, it kind of creates this illusion in your mind that I'm flying a lot faster than I am. So this is kind of important to display and demonstrate how my actual speed of the craft is going. I mean... It's cool when you're like, whoa, that was so quick, but but you're really kind of, I mean, what I'm uploading is DVRs that are there strictly to demonstrate uh, my experience, you know, so my experience is not that I'm, I'm going blindingly fast, but actually I'm very proud of how fast I'm managing to fly the last couple of days and what the throttle feels like and just how much fun it is to make it happen.